Pernell Carl Subban. AKA PK Subban is perhaps one of the most polarizing players of the past decade. And hate him or love him, Subban's larger than life persona has had many positive effects in growing the game that we love today. NHL covers, fashion, charity foundations, GQ videos, he's a previous Norris Trophy winner, millions of dollars of jersey revenue. PK Subban for the entirety of his career has just been a superstar both on and off the ice. Yet today, given how consistent PK has been for the entirety of his career, we are seeing one of the steepest declines of the past decade. As PK Subban has gone from a Norris Trophy first team all-star defenseman to perhaps one of the worst value defensemen in the entire NHL. On this graph, we see PK Subban's career point per game average from 2010 until today. And in terms of PK's offensive production, he's been very consistent the entirety of his career. And of course, he won the Norris Trophy in 2013 where he had his best defensive and offensive season. And this season, Subban has registered a dismal .22 point per game average. And this offensive production is clearly the worst in his entire career alongside of his worst season in his career for his defensive game. So what happened? In today's video, we're going to explore the rise and fall of P.K. Subban. And we're going to try to get a better understanding of what made Subban a superstar and why we're currently seeing his fall from grace today and perhaps whether or not he can turn his game around. And before we start this video, make sure to comment down below whether you think that PK Subban can turn his career around. And make sure to hit that subscribe button for some more awesome hockey content. We are on the road to 10,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much for all the support. Let's get right into this video. PK Subban was born in Toronto, Ontario, and he grew up in a hockey family. His brother Jordan, who was drafted by the Canucks in 2013, and Malcolm, who just got traded to the Blackhawks this past deadline. And he's always had tremendous skill level, even from a very young age. In fact, PK even played alongside a Steven Stamkos growing up. And in 2005, Subban got drafted 105th overall in the OHL draft to the Belleville Bulls. And to be honest, he had a pretty underwhelming freshman season, only putting up 12 points in 56 games. But this was expected from that later round pick. Because the next season, Subban would progress really well, putting up 56 points and had a tremendous playoff performance where he was then drafted in the second round to the Montreal Canadiens. And considering that P.K. Subban would quickly develop into one of the most exciting talents in the NHL, this draft pick was an absolute steal. And on a side note, I tried to look into scouting reports on why P.K. Subban slipped out of the first round. And the most I could find was that Subban just wasn't refined. He was a raw player, he needed a lot of polishing, and he needed to work in his own end. And in his draft year, he was only sitting around 5'9", so he grew nearly 3 inches by the time he made it to the NHL. And Subban would make a prolific impact in the NHL. As he joined the Canadians late in the season where he'd only played two regular season games, but even in those games he looked really good and he put up 2 points in those 2 games. And in the playoffs, I kid you not, Subban went from a rookie bottom pairing defenseman playing only around 10 minutes per game to playing 30 minutes against Sidney Crosby and the Pittsburgh Penguins as an inexperienced rookie. So what a way to go into the league. And in the next two seasons, Subban would continue to develop his game really well and PK would really progress his defensive and physical game. Because Subban around this time started to become known for his open ice hits and his sandpaper grip playing style. And on top of this, he would be chipping in offensively for the Habs as he registered back-to-back 30-point -back seasons. And in 2013, during the lockout season, PK would explode in development. 38 points in 42 games, so just under point per game. He had his best defensive season of his career. And of course, PK Subban would take home the Norris Trophy. He was a first-team NHL All-Star, and he was the Canadiens' most valuable player. So at this point, this was Subban's peak of his career. And in the next three seasons in Montreal, P.K. Subban's game would remain consistent. His offensive production was stable, sitting around that 50 to 60 point mark. And then of course he had signed his monster 8 year, $72 million deal. Now of course, like any other player, he did have his ups and downs. And was involved in drama that was strongly tied to his big ego. Alongside of some costly mistakes made by his high risk play. And those factors were a large reason in the demise of Subban as a Montreal Canadian. So what made P.K. Subban so good as a Montreal Canadian? Well, P.K. Subban is a heart and soul player who puts 110% in every shift. He would grind, he would deliver punishing hits, and he had a rocket of a shot from the point. And on top of this, Subban was considered an elite puck moving defenseman. So with this being said, P.K. was very confident. He plays with swagger and he also took big risks. 
And because of this, Subban truly was a great defenseman. There's no doubt about this. He's a Norris Trophy winner. He's a multi-time first team NHL All-Star. And he's a very passionate player who plays with emotions. Now these emotions did lead to more penalty minutes, but also led to a player that wore his heart on his shoulder every single game. Because even though he hasn't gone all the way, he's a player that uses momentum and emotion to show up during playoffs. And his numbers say it all. He's had many dominating playoff performances where he can really take the charge of his team. But at the same time, he does take costly risks. So again, he's a risk versus reward player. So you do got to give some to get some. So in 2016, Subban was traded for Shea Weber and he was headed to the Music City. And PK of course had big shoes to fill as he was a replacement for Shea Weber, who was the captain of the Predators for six straight seasons. But ironically, even though he was that replacement for a cornerstone player, PK Subban was in less limelight and he had far less responsibility on a Nashville team that had one of the best defensive cores in the entire league. And in Nashville, PK was an instant success. He dealt with his injuries, but overall he did have a great season where he put up 40 points in 60 games and had a good playoff performance. And on top of this, in a more defensive system, his defensive stats were improved from his last season in Montreal. And in the 2017-2018 season, P.K. Subban once again elevated his game. 16 goals, 59 points, he was third in Norris voting, and he also had another very strong playoff performance. And in his final season in Nashville, Subban faced an array of injuries which only allowed him to play 63 games. And in this shortened season, Subban did not play bad by any means. He did regress from the previous season, but he was also facing nagging injuries. He put up 31 points in 63 games, and Subban was starting to receive a lot of criticism, especially because of his contract, as Subban was the highest paid player on the roster. And, you know, another thing to take note of is I think Nashville expected P.K. Subban to come to Nashville and be a better player. And he didn't get better, he kind of stayed the same, if not regressed, and when he tied that to $9 million a year, it was definitely a tough pill to swallow. And for a Nashville team that had a plethora of high defensemen, Subban was someone who was considered expendable. And during the second round of the 2019 NHL Draft, the Nashville Predators traded P.K. Subban to the New Jersey Devils for two second round picks, Jeremy Davies and Matthew Santini. And so when this trade was announced, it did seem to make sense for both sides. The Preds have a great decor and they had prospects coming up in the pipeline like Dante Fabro and they needed this cap space to sign Matt Duchesne. And on the other hand, the Devils had a lot of cap space, a young core and did not have to give up a first round pick. Because heading into the season, on paper, analysts, including myself, thought the Devils could compete for a wildcard spot. But P.K. Subban's season alongside of the Devils' season has just been extremely disappointing. As P.K. Subban has hit what seems to be rock bottom in his career. 15 points in 65 games. His worst defensive season in his career. Many turnovers, mistakes, and just failure. But why, why is P.K. experiencing the worst regression in his entire career? Throughout PK's entire career, it is very obvious that he's a very just emotional player. Now this does come with its pros and cons, but PK is the type of player that relies on confidence in himself, from the fans, and the team in order to be successful. Because even in Montreal, where you could argue that the team was not happy with him, PK for the most part was loved by the fans and he had strong emotional connections to the city of Montreal. Now fast forward to the Nashville Predators, he doesn't have the same responsibilities that he did with Montreal Canadiens, but he still performs well, especially because he's playing on a great team. And so his confidence is high. He had his ups and downs, but he was still a high-end puck moving defenseman. Because honestly, I think it's safe to say, if it wasn't for Nashville's deep defensive core combined with need for cap flexibility, P.K. Subban would still be a predator. And he'd once again be a 50-point defenseman with a decent defensive game. And to be honest, from the get-go, the team was just a mess. And on top of this, goaltending was just a mess. And so the momentum was taken away from the very start. And this confidence that P.K. Subban just needs to succeed just wasn't there. And especially after they trade Taylor Hall and they're in a lottery position, the season basically ended before it even started. So remember how I showed that graph at the start? Well, this season for P.K. Subban has been the definition of an outlier. The 2019-2020 season does not align whatsoever with the entirety of P.K. Subban's career. So what does this mean? I think there's still a good chance once the Devils start gaining momentum on this rebuild that P.K. Subban claws his way back to being the player that we know him to be. And that is of course a confident, the key word is their confident, puck moving defender who can hit, score and promote the game of hockey as that amazing persona, that amazing character. And there is of course a chance that P.K. Subban's game does continue to regress, 
But given what we know from his game and what makes him a great player, a Norris winning defenseman, I do believe that PK has what it takes to have a massive bounce back season. Anyways guys, how do you guys feel about PK Subban? Will his game come back or will it keep sliding down a steep, steep hill? Let me know down below and make sure that subscribe button for some more awesome hockey content. Anyways guys, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for all the support. We are on the road to 10,000 subscribers. I appreciate you guys' support so, so much. On a side note, which jersey should I get next? I'm gonna try to swap up the jerseys, buy some new ones, kind of swap up the background of my set a bit more. Anyways guys, have a great day. See you guys later.